happy. Uh, lovely to have all of you here today. Um, at tonight, I, I've got hair on my face. That's good. Okay. Anyway, I'll find it. It'll. It'll. These things reveal themselves. But um, it is my absolute joy and delight and honor to introduce to you the gentleman we're going to be having and spending a little time with. I had the pleasure of uh, hosting the Today Show with him a couple of years ago, and it was the most electric week of my entire life. We had to add like 15 second, extra seconds uh, so that neither one of us would get arrested and thrown off, the, and NBC would not get millions of dollars in fines. Uh, he's that good. He's that smart. We have become very, very good friends over the last year and a half. I wrote, I went home from that week of being with, with him and wrote a movie uh, for him because I said, I don't, I, I want this man in my life. I, I adore him. I, he makes me so happy. He's going to make you happy tonight. You're here because you know his work. You love his work. You don't need to hear about all, you can Google him. And let's just bring him out, all right? Craig Ferguson. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Google the bathroom. <laughs> I think that's the best entry you can get. Are you, are you there? I'm here. All right, all right. All right. Hi, everybody. Hello. Ah. You brought out course, my book, not we're yours. We're here to talk about <laughs> The Rock, The Road, and The Rabbi. <laughs> Kathy Lee's journey to the heart of spiritual faith and the land where it all began. Yes, thank now, you Kathy. for that. No, wait, sir. Oh, I'm into. I. You, they got Greg, us grapes, isn't that great? Great. You are famously vegan. Well, everybody grapes are knows, pretty vegan, Kathy. You know. Everybody knows I love my grapes. Yes. So I brought my grapes, and I brought these grapes on my plate from my house for you. Oh, that's uh, these actually they're they're they're, they're Gifford grapes. They're Gifford grapes. Wow. Okay. They are delicious. So cheers to mm. you, my darling friend. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like Emmys. <laughs> Every time we took their backstage talking about how I won an Emmy, we tell them what you go, you go. Every time they were talking about her Emmys, I said to her, daytime. <laughs> <laughs> so I wore my Game of Thrones outfit. Yeah, it's very, very good, <laughs> actually. <laughs> All righty, so um, we're here to talk about your book, and I don't know why. Do we not. really have to talk about it? Yes, because, because it's out, and we want you to make the New York Times bestseller list because you deserve to. How, have any of you had a chance to read this yet, or you just hear it because you, yeah, you have? Or, I, oh, I know, but sometimes p important people get galleys. Yeah. <laughs> what Kathy's trying to get to is that she read the galleys some time ago and she's forgotten what the book <laughs> is about. That is kind of true. It wasn't about four Well, months. a little bit. It was a couple of months ago, a I said to you. Yeah. And it's fantastic. It's, um, it's typical you. It's, it's very honest. It's very, it's very funny. It's very poignant. And, and you learn something that surprises you. Uh, as you come away from it. And I think that so many people know you as a talk show host. You start the book talking about that. Yeah, about being a talk show host because- Which you never thought any, you never thought of yourself that way. I still don't really. I, yeah. I mean, I, I don't really think of myself as a talk show host. I, when I think about myself at all, it's probably unhealthy. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I, I think, I think when, when I spend a lot of time thinking about me, and you know people in show business, that's popular as a, as a pastime. <laughs> If I think about myself too much, it, it goes south pretty fast. Um, but I, I, I think, I, I didn't think I would be a talk show host. Um, but I was, apparently. Um, and you were not great at it, no, by your no, own admission was, at the I beginning. No, I was not great You at were it. trying to f follow the The whole path. way through, I think. No, 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 that's not true. Your genius moments. I never watched, but I heard. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, you learned what Welcome to this evening's Game of Thrones <laughs> event. <laughs> You learned what did not work for you. The well, paradigm didn't work for you. Well, the same, the same as it is for you. I mean, look, I, I watched you and Regis. I listened to Howard Stern as another one. Uh, to a certain extent, Dave as well. The people who uh, owned their own uh, persona on television. There was, it was a, it's a very fearless way to broadcast, and I, and I don't know how wise it would be to broadcast like that right now. I think you did right to get out when you did. Both, um, both times. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think that it, it's uh, so it, it, it's uh, it's something that I, I only studied once I was kind of offered the job uh, and I kind of found my way through it 
Um, but well, I never had any great reverence for it. I still don't. And it was 10 years. Mm. That is a long time to just uh, not love what you're doing. Oh, no, I did love it. I, I did love it. I just didn't uh, worship it. I, but I did love it. I, you I, shouldn't I worship had a it. Really good, I had a really good time doing it. I'm very proud of that show, and I'm very glad I did it. But, um, but I'm, I'm glad. I'm f Look, I went diving with sharks once. I loved it, but I don't have to do it again. Yeah. yeah. You know what that's like. Yeah, I, I've done it. It was great. Tell everybody a little bit about um, uh, your, your growing up days. Uh, you grew up in a t uh, tough neighborhood. Well, it was, but even, in the, uh, even as I've been on this tour talking about the book, I, you know, I, people, because everyone likes a hard luck story, and uh, like, tell us about your hard scrabble days digging for bones in Scotland and stuff. <laughs> and, and I think, well, it, maybe it was just my perception of it, because it was pretty tough. I remember it being a little tough, but then, in the book, which you remember, Kathy Lee. I actually did read I know every did. word no. of it. I had a conversation with you guys. Uh, I'm sure many of you read Angela's Ashes, uh, Frank McCourt's fantastic yes. book about uh, his, his early life. In, and a, and a really good movie, too. Yeah, yeah. And I met uh, Frank at a book event, not dissimilar to this, uh, years and years ago. I mean, he's passed on now. but. He was telling me that when he got the key to the city of Dublin for writing that book, he right. said there were two groups of people outside the town hall. One was a group of people saying, well done, Frank, oh, good for you, That's it. well done. And another group of people, just as big, shouting, it wasn't like that at all, you lying bastard. You know, and, <laughs> and he said they were probably both right. You know, it was, it's, uh, it's how you remember things isn't necessarily journalistic accuracy. And, I, and I, tr I try to be honest with that in the book. This is honestly how I remember it, but I don't know if that's enough to get it through a court of law, you know. Well, you've also been very, very honest through the years about your, your battles with addictions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm surprised from some of the ways you describe what you lived through that you remember any of it at all. I mean, it's like there, there people say, if you, if you can remember the 60s, you didn't live them, you know, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I, I can remember the 60s better than the 80s because <laughs> I was born. You were a wee boy. I was a wee boy in the <laughs> 60s, yeah. I, I think that I do remember it. I, I, I do remember the, the difficulty of, uh, of active drink and alcoholism, and I, I am quite open about it because I don't see it as, I think, to, particularly addiction has a sort of, um, it has a kind of delicious element of shame for the media sometimes. It's like, oh, and so you nearly died of addiction. They <laughs> go, yes, I fucking did. And, <laughs> and, and I, uh, we can swear here, can't we? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm about to break out a few. All right, okay. <laughs> That'll make the news. So, uh, <laughs> so I am... Um, so I think that I, I wanted to, f for me, as much as for anyone else who may uh, receive any benefit from it, demystify it, uh, uh, de desentimentalize it, if that even makes sense. But, but the idea of, of making it less of a TV movie and more of a kind of disaster film, that um, <laughs> it has... Um, James Joyce used to say that sentimentality, we don't know, he, he used to say, he probably said it once and then wrote it down and that's all the time he said it, but <laughs> he said... <laughs> you quite enjoyed that. That, that. that made me laugh inside. <laughs> I, I, I went, that was very good, that, Craig. And you got in James Joyce as well. Yeah. Because everybody here has also not read Ulysses. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're amongst friends, everybody. But I... Um, he said sentimentality was unearned emotion. And I think sometimes in the discussion, the public discussion of addiction, uh, I feel sometimes it's a little frothy and uh, sentimental. And uh, whilst that's it's understandable. It's cliched also. Yeah, a little. And I, and I think that there's a very uh, clear uh, way out of addiction if you're in it. And, I, and without breaking the traditions of any organization I may or may not be part of, I feel that... Uh, it, it, it's, it's very simple, go, go there, do what they say, and y you'll be free, you know, it, it, there's a way out. And I think sometimes it's like, oh, th that might not work. It, it'll work if, if you, you do, do it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, it's in, in Christian scripture, that, that whole thing of, you know, faith without works is dead. It, it, or another way of putting it is, there's an old joke I heard about a priest and a rabbi going to a boxing match. I love it. All right. <laughs> so, already, I, got, I knew I got it with priest and rabbis. He's like, yes. <laughs> Tell me more, I'm a woman of faith. So, 
There's a priest and a rabbi go to a boxing match, and before the fight, one of the boxers crosses himself. And the rabbi says to the priest, what does that mean? And the priest says, if he can't fight, fuck all. Do you know what I mean? Got, yeah. And, and I think that's what it is. You, you've got to be able to do the thing. I mean, it's nice, but you've got to be able to do it. You know what I love when a lot of my Jewish friends, and I've got a lot of Jewish heritage, my father is Jewish, when, when my, my Jewish friends say something and they go, and they knock on wood. Do you know where that comes from? Uh, I've got a feeling that probably it's from Jesus. <laughs> is it from Jesus? We've had conversations like this before. <laughs> Yes, it's, that's where it came, that's the origin of it. Knocking on the cross, put, I put my faith in the cross of Christ, the oh, wooden cross. Oh, right. I love to tell my Jewish friends that. They go, ah! <laughs> so anyway. I, I thought you were Jewish. Well, I, I, you're, you have Jewish blood, of course I do. Right, yeah. right. uh, I, I didn't know you weren't completely Jewish. I'm afraid I have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you want to talk about tonight? Because there's so tell us about riding the elephant because that's that's an actual story. This the the book is called Riding the Elephant because it it begins with a story called Riding the Elephant. It is about a journey I took to Sri Lanka of all places. Uh, with a girlfriend. Uh, well, yeah, well, you know, it was before we met. Uh, <laughs> it was 30 years ago, uh, and. <laughs> I, uh, I went to Sri Lanka and uh, I, was, I wasn't having a very good time on this holiday and I went on an elephant ride um, with a local gent who was offering elephant rides around the, the neighborhood. And uh, on that elephant ride, I got to talking to the, the elephant's um, handler, I guess. And, um, agent. Agent, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, it was, uh, he, we got talking and he said, would you like to come see my village? And so I said, sure, why not? And, uh, this is offensive to you, this story? <laughs> you, this is the one? There's much worse to come. You could be... He doesn't do anything weird to the elephant. Uh, well, uh, well, that's, well, yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah, she's right to leave. No, no, I think she's, she's <laughs> gone to the bathroom. Yes. I'm oh, surprised. She goes, While she's in the bathroom, we should all hide. <laughs> 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 I made myself laugh there. Oh, have a grape. You earned it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Uh. <laughs> so in the book, um, Riding the Elephant, available now, uh, <laughs> I go on this elephant ride with this gent, and he takes me to his village, and he was a Hindu, this gentleman, and um, his, uh, his, I think it was his grandfather had just died. So they were having the funeral. And in uh, Hindu tradition, I think, I don't know much about Hindu tradition, so please don't be offended if you are Hindu or uh, if I'm getting this wrong, but certainly my memory of it is that he said, would you like to come and see my grandfather? He's, he's just died. I was like, <laughs> um, okay. Um, <laughs> I'd never seen that. And so on that elephant ride, when I... When in Sri Lanka. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So I went to the... Uh, uh, and I went to look, and the, the old gentleman was laid out, and... Uh, and this uh, bed, there was muslin and uh, tusks and stuff around. It was a very uh, kind of eerie scene. Uh, very, but everyone was quite upbeat because uh, he had been very ill for a long time and had suffered a bit. And, uh, and he had been finally released from his suffering and he was very, very old. And, and anyway, it's, he was moving on to the next incarnation. Uh, again, I don't know much about it. So uh, everyone was quite kind of upbeat. And uh, it was the first time I'd seen a dead body. Uh, ever in my life, and, and it, it had a very kind of weird and profound effect on me. Not so much at the time, and I think that's what the book, if there is a, a, a kind of theme in the book, it's not so much about the events themselves, the events do happen, but more about the lens through which these events are now meaningful to me through the perception of, of time, mm -hmm. that time alters uh, things I immeasurably. For example, yeah, this is not in the book, but it's a true thing. Oh, you're back. Anyway, <laughs> so the elephant's <laughs> buttered up. <laughs> I went too far. I knew I was going to go too far. I'm so sorry that the elephant wasn't buttered up. Uh, not yet. Also, and I'm vegan. So the. Uh, <laughs> but I think we were talking uh. about the lens of the time, how time is. Uh, <laughs> and, and I think that time is very useful. One of the few advantages of aging 
and, and there aren't that many, but they're one of the, <laughs> one of them is the, that time removes a great deal of toxic and deadly shame. And I think shame and embarrassment are, are very difficult. For, certainly for me, I, I, I'll give you for example. When I was 29 years old, I got sober. Uh, and when I got sober, I used to, when I was a child, uh, I should add, when I was a child, I, I used to wet the bed. I was a bed wetter as a child. I'm not trying to pick anyone up here, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bed wetter as a child, then I stopped when I was about 13, 12, 13 years old. And then uh, I started drinking when I was about 15 years old, took up wetting the bed again, uh, intermittently, uh, and then got sober when I was 29 and stopped wetting the bed. Almost on the same day. To be honest, it was the same day. <laughs> and what a thrill for you. No, no. I mean it, to not, to not have to I'm deal with that you, anymore. If it, if, it, if it was just not waking it up in your own pee, it would be, <laughs> I'd be ahead of the game. There you go. But when I was, but when I was newly sober, or when I was in that period of my life, I would have, I swear to God, I would have died rather than tell you that about myself. Mm. It was so crushingly embarrassing, such an embarrassing, I had such power over me that I would be such a pathetic figure. And now, uh, as you know, I'm 57 years old and mortality, you know, is much more real than it was then, it, certainly chronologically it feels, I don't care. <laughs> and I think to be released from that kind of feeling about yourself, mm -hmm. I, I think is, is, is very liberating. So I wanted to do some things like that for my own benefit, of course, and for anyone else who may read it. Really, that, that's... So if the book has any uh, altruistic um, intentions, and it has some, I mean, let's be honest, you don't get rich from writing books. But, uh, I, I don't believe, I mean, some people do, if there's a wizard in it or something. <laughs> they get very rich yeah, yeah. on wizards. Actually, there's a wizard in this book. <laughs> you just have to be very clever to see him. Uh, but the, um, but I, 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 I do, I do want to, you know, you do feel that I've learned this. If this is of any use, please take it. Mm. I think that's what surprised me the most when I really got to know you and we got this, but just what a beautifully tender person you are. No Stop always. it! Let me finish. Okay. There is a this goodness. This is very uncomfortable. <laughs> Good. Look at me. Okay. Look at me. Yes. There is a goodness to you that is um, uh, beautiful, to, beautiful to see and a, and a kindness. You treated every single person on that set, and we had 175 people on our set. Bless you. Bless you. See how kind he is? <laughs> and he was truly, truly worried about your urinary tract infection when you were gone. I was. He was. I've Am so I been there. I <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how you can shame someone to, for going to the bathroom, which, let's be honest, we've all kind of been there. <laughs> And yeah, it's, it's such an odd thing. The humans are so odd, aren't they? We, like, I, I find us fascinating. Yes, so do I. But I mean, if you only know somebody, I think this is true of it. If people say, oh, I know you, I've been watching you for you know, 40 years on television. And I, and I kind of laugh inside because it's like, you know what? If you only know me from what you've seen on television, mm. you know 5% of me. Mm. 5%, maybe. Mm. And that's what I loved about getting to know. If you only know you from your comedy, or from your uh, hosting, we don't, we don't know one another, do we? We don't know one another until we invest our lives into each other's lives. Yeah, I think it takes, it takes time. I think with writing though, and, and I do mean this, uh, both uh, you know, in the writing that I've read of yours too, is that writing is an intimate form of communication which is not, it's not as possible, it's one-on-one -on -one, really. I mean, I know it's kind of one way in the sense that I, you know, I write, you read, so that's, that's kind of a one-way street, but, uh, but not really, because you interpret what you read. What on earth are you doing? <laughs> now what? Now there's someone has another issue. Yeah. Wow. Are you, is this bathroom waiting list cards? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, I just, These are, I just want to get my name down. <laughs> These are the penetrating questions that people want to ask you at the end of our hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but the, I, uh, I, what the hell was I talking about? 
how you are, it's a one-way street, basically. You yes, are, yes. But it's intimate, and I think that's what it is. And I think that, you know, it's intimate and timeless. Like, uh, because I've been on, you know, a little publicity tour for the book, someone asked me, and I, I can't remember who, but someone asked me, what do you want for the book? I said, I don't, I don't want anything for the book. The book's done. I'm fulfilling a moral and legal duty to the book by letting you know it's here, but, um, <laughs> but the book is done. I, I can't change it. If you don't like it, uh, okay. You uh -huh. wouldn't change it, though. No, I don't think so. But that's now. I mean, I've only just finished it. it, it ask me in 10 years, I'll be like, oh, I can't believe I wrote that in a book. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I have that now. Like, I look at other books that I have written, and, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I would put that in now. Really? Yeah, I think so. I think that you change. But, but a book, I think, is, is it's an interesting form of communication because it's not just me to you right now, in this evening, in this night, in this moment, we discuss. It, it's not just that. It's, I, I throw a stick into the future. And, and, and everyone who writes anything, you throw a stick into the future and you have that power. So it, it, if you, you know, it wasn't published, it was like Marcus Aurelius, who's, who is a writer that I read a, a great deal of, he didn't even write it for anyone to read. You know. He probably didn't think that anybody would. Oh, he was the emperor. He could have made them read it. But <laughs> they couldn't read. Well, there is that. He could have taught them to read. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, but I think that it is, it, I feel like with writing, in, in, it is different from any other form of artistic endeavor because if you write what you believe to be the correct words and you put them in the correct order, it is then bulletproof to any form of criticism because I, don't, I genuinely don't, and I don't mean this in a rude way or an arrogant way, but I genuinely don't care. Yeah. You know, I, I'm free from, when I was a young man, I didn't feel that way. When you right. would read certain things in reviews and stuff, were they just scathing? Would they, they affect? Could, yeah, didn't you? Uh, were they always oh. nice about you in the press? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it's I think it's been fabulous to me. But I think that, I think that what you have to do, or what one has to do, is to not read any of it. I used to only read the good stuff. Like, I would have people vet it and go, just give me stuff that says nice things about me. But I think that's just as bad for you, actually. Maybe worse. Mm. Uh, so just don't read it. I don't, like, I, I don't have a Twitter account. If you're following me on Twitter, by the way, you follow Tomas, who works with me. <laughs> it's not me. So if it sometimes look like, wow, Craig's really talking like he's an immigrant from the Czech Republic. <laughs> He is. <laughs> that's because that's who you're talking. <laughs> um, I, and I, I just, I can't do that. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't. Yeah, you know. don't play the games. You, you. I, I tried. And I, you know I, what? I really I, tried. I know you did. And, and I, so did I in my own way. We all try to. We, sure. We come, we're learning. We're, we're learning the ropes. And then you realize what doesn't work and what sucks your very soul out of you. And that's non-negotiable. And it, it sort of came to that for you. I think as to a certain extent, yes. I, I, it sounds a little, I, I feel like it, I may project a sort of arrogance with that. And I don't mean it like no, you that. Don't. I, I honestly don't, sometimes I think, and this happens if, for example, you'd make a dietary choice. You, ha you are a woman of faith, so you, you will have encountered this. If you make a stance for something you believe in, for example, I do not eat animals. I don't eat them or anything that squirts out of them. That's my thing. Uh, this, is, this is not me planting a flag and saying, you must all follow me now right. and agree with me. If you agree with me, great. If you don't agree with me, okay. I'm not telling you how to live. I think every time you explain something about yourself, I think sometimes it's seen as a challenge or a call to arms. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's neither. It's just a piece of information. Sometimes it's a call to arms, sometimes it's a challenge, but, but maybe if you phrase it like that, then, then that's what it is. If, you just, if someone asks you a question, like whenever I say I'm vegan, somebody will say, where'd you get your protein? I'm like, you don't, you're not a fucking doctor, first of all. <laughs> the people always say, where'd you get your protein? I'm like, oh, where does a fucking cow get its protein from? What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Everybody's like, everyone's an expert on protein, all of that. I, I need my protein. You, no, you don't. Uh, you don't need as much as you're getting, perhaps. I don't know. I'm, I'm, clearly, I am not, you know, suffering for lack of food. So, I don't know. I'm getting plenty of protein, is what I'm saying. Don't worry about me. What, what's missing in your life, if anything? I, would, I, could, love, I could sit and talk with him for 
10 hours. We only have like half an hour left. I want to, what's the most important thing in your life right now? Family, without a doubt, um, hands down. Uh, my, my, uh, my wife and children are uh, the length and breadth of my riches. There is nothing else. Um, the, it took me a long time to understand that. I know. Um, that, you know, it's, it's very Wizard of Oz, very, oh, it was here all along, Dorothy. Oh, it was, you know, love is the answer. But it kind of is. Mm -hmm. And I'm frustrated that I'd been hearing that for so long and, and couldn't hear it. But, but it is the truth. Um, I, I wanted things for so long, you know, uh, kudos and, and money, I'm afraid, to, I'm ashamed to say it, but yes, money and, 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 and f fame and s success and, and things and uh, Stuff. approval and yeah. And, and uh, all of these things are great, um, <laughs> but they're not, there's not enough protein in them for me. <laughs> um, so th that, that's really where I, that's where I get my protein. Uh, and and that, that's what it feels like to me now. It, it, it's a, but it's an, it's, life is evolving, it is in session, it is moving, it is, it, is, uh, it is complex and it is fluid. And it is fast. Uh, my oh, God, yes. is it fast. Well, you've got an older son uh, and you've got your new, he's eight now, right? Yeah, that's, that's not that new, I guess, anymore. It's, uh, no, but I mean, there's, there's one's 18 and one's eight? Yes, so it's, uh, there's a 10-year gap. You told gap. me that you have an ejaculation once every 10 years. Every 10 years, yes. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> you know like these big orchids in the jungle? <laughs> That's what Scottish people are like. They just, <laughs> if I go off tonight, the first two rows are going to get pregnant. So, <laughs> so maybe you made the right choice. <laughs> oh, oh, it kills me. Yeah. I set you up for that one today. Um, there's a line in our movie where uh, my character says um, she's a widow and she's congrat congratulating another character on, be on getting married. And your character's trying to get me to talk about what I'm doing, about how I'm getting over my grief. And I go, no, 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 no. She's happy. She's, this is a happy time for her. And then the line was, I remember happy. You think it's never gonna end. Mm. And you told me at that time that that hits you like a Yes, it's, it's very, I mean, it's, well, it's disturbing uh, because, of course, everything is in flux at all times. But I think that the counterweight to that is something that I think we are, uh, as a society, perhaps, and I don't speak for anyone but myself, but I observe I'm part of the universe, uh, I think we're having a little difficulty being here, now, mm -hmm. this moment, us, this room, this, this experience now. It's helped a great deal, I think, you've noticed by the fact that everyone's phone got put away. So we're not working to record ourselves in a flattering light, to put on a uh, piece of internet technology so that we can imagine what other people think when they see it which seems a complex way to live your life. I think that I, I think the counterweight to the terror of happiness ending is enjoyment of the moment and, and living life each fucking millisecond it arrives because otherwise you'd go crazy. I'd, or, or <laughs> I'd go crazy <laughs> if, I, if I couldn't live in, in this moment. And so as much as is possible for me, I try and live inside, not just a day at a time in that a way that everybody understands for alcoholics, but actually as a, as a, as a, as a philosophy, as a, as, a, as a way of moving through this veil. Why Scotland? Why'd you move home? It's where I'm from. And, uh, you didn't I, intend to, though. I right? did not intend to move back to Scotland, but what happened was, well, I noticed a couple of things. I went back for a couple, I used to always think when I was growing up there that Scotland was a dark, miserable place full of angry, unpleasant people. And then I realized it's not at all. It's just when I lived there, I, I was a dark, miserable person <laughs> full of angry, unpleasant emotions. And they are lovely. And, and I started to notice that 
Mm. And also, I lived in California, in Los Angeles in particular, through four years of a drought. And I never want to see, I, I just, every, it rains so much in Scotland. <laughs> and when I see it every day, I'm like, ah, bring <laughs> it on. Because I, I hated that drought. I hated yeah. it. I, I just hate it. Th I, I don't know if any of you have lived through that. I, I, anyone's been through a drought. It, it's very odd. It, I think Death some Valley. people do. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. It, it, things sound different. Uh, it, 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 the light changes, it seems. Things get sharp and, and brittle. And, I, I, and I know there's plenty of places in America you can go to where it rains. But I, I thought, nah, I, I kind of want to go back to Scotland. And I'm still an American. Look, trust me, if you don't believe me, ask the IRS. But <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, and, and I, I'm here all the time. I'm, I'm, you you yeah. know this, I'm back forward all the time. But I, you know, I'm there for now. I don't know where that'll go. You bought this beautiful, beautiful home, this ancient home from what, is 1682? Is that the year? 1681. <laughs> You know nothing about me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like this, this, it's, I love it that you said it's the first non-fortified. It's, it it's a home yeah. of peace to you. Yeah, it is. It was, it, symbolically for me, it has significance in the sense it was the first non-fortified uh, uh, country house in Scotland, which means it, it wasn't built as a castle. It was never a prison or a military installation or a, it's a, it's a home. And it was one of the, the earliest large homes built uh, in 1681. Shortly afterwards, the uh, first of the Jacobite Wars started. <laughs> and, uh, the, but the, uh, the idea was that it was a house of uh, enlightenment, and I like that. One of the reasons I wanted to write uh, the, the movie with you, it's called Then Came You, and we hope it'll be out soon, but uh, we have our doubts. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, that's the hardest part of things sometimes, is finding the right baby, you know, place to put your baby. And, but anyway, I was not talking about this. I don't know. I, don't I know. think, w why don't we put the baby into a little basket and sail it down, down the, the Nile? Down the Nile. There you go. Down the Nile. Uh, that's I'm trying work. to remember what I wanted to talk to you about, about with that. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay. No. So, so what would you say, what could somebody offer you at this point in your life that, um, that you would leave Scott and leave Megan and the kids? Oh, fuck. And, <laughs> and I mean, really, is there anything that is like a life dream for well, you? Well, leave Megan and the kids? Not, not permanently. Oh, I just, right, mean, right. yeah. I mean, you hate it when you go on the road. Yeah. You, lo right. you love that. I like performing. You like, I, I, yes. I do like performing. I get a lot of, uh, like, even now, as we sit here and we, we do this, I, I, I enjoy this. I, I, I like this. I like this feeling. Um, I, but the travel gets to me a bit. Yeah. I'm getting a little tired of that, you know. Um, you know, I, I, it's like, oh, God, again, you know. And it's, it's just because I'm, yeah, I think I'm getting old. My hip hurts and my skin's dry and <laughs> young people annoy me and stuff like that. <laughs> Especially yet, young comedians. I don't know where that's coming from at all. And yet it was Megan, his, oh, his wife is so beautiful. And you she's guys a have, fairly attractive person. She's an true. extreme, she's beautiful and they have such a, it's fun to watch you guys uh, just. Can you clarify about watching us? <laughs> That I was their weekend guest uh, during our shoot. Yeah, that's and right. She watched us. <laughs> and she made haggis bolognese for us. And you invited a bunch of friends. And I yeah, saw we had what you people around, yeah. Yeah, some wonderful, eclectic group of people. And it was alive and it was crackling. And it was. Yeah. And, and it's very different from your LA parties, you know. I, do you think parties in Los Angeles? And perhaps New York has difficulty with this too, although less so, but do you think parties in LA are really parties? No, because you know what the difference was? Mm -hmm. Those people were your friends. You yeah. had your friends over to your home. Yeah, they, they were, were also pretty much half in the bag most of the time. Uh, <laughs> um, I think people in LA are careful at parties. I think they're- Really? Yeah, I think they're about work parties. Yeah, that's LA. what I mean. They're, it's like, yeah. Who do you know? Well, yeah, and they're kind of like looking, like if you look over the shoulder of my house, all you're gonna see is a dog somewhere, you know? <laughs> it's a lot of dogs. And the cat. And the cat, I'm not, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the cat. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm cruel to it or anything, don't get me wrong, I'm just, look, if I had to pick a favorite, it wouldn't be the cat, is what I'm saying. 
What's weird is the cat really likes me. I know that. The cat, the, the cat. cat comes and sits on me. I'm like, I don't care for this. I don't like you or what you're doing. <laughs> and the cat's like, no. Oh, I love that you're a challenge. <laughs> I don't, um, you know, it's, uh, oof. I know. It's, so there's, so th there's nothing that, because when we were doing certain scenes, yeah. I had no, I knew he'd be a comedic genius in this. I knew he would. It was Megan who read, that's what it was I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Megan read the script first. And she said to you, Craig, you've got to do this movie because Kathy, she gets you. She has got you down. And then you came and had your way with the script, which was fine. I always like to have a little bit of creative input in what's going on. <laughs> and he did. He made it so much better in so many different ways. But there, is, there are a couple of scenes where I, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I'm working with Cary Grant. Or oh my gosh, I'm working with John. I, I, I cannot tell you how, what a brilliant um, d d uh, dramatic actor you are. I mean, everybody knows you as funny, but you're such a good actor. So what you're saying is, everybody thinks you're funny, but you're actually better if you stop being funny. No. <laughs> you can't stop being funny anymore that you can stop breathing. Yeah. In right. fact, I, that's what I said to you in my last text. He does, he, he does when, I, when I text him, <laughs> it, there, it's like months between, until I get an answer. And I go, OK, he's in Scotland. He doesn't look. So I, I texted him about a month ago. And what did I say to you? Did you die? <laughs> <laughs> then a couple of weeks later, what did I text you? I guess you died. <laughs> He's alive and well, look! Well, uh, it, it's, it's a funny thing because <laughs> I, what I take great comfort in... Oh, somebody's arrived. Yes? Thank you so much. Um, no. Who, who's this? You're going to have to spell my name right or we're not going to answer your question. I'm just kidding. Is that questions from... Yeah, is it time? You want to take some questions, everybody? Sure. Is that what you'd like to do? Yeah. yeah. What were you going to say? Finish your I, thought. I, I was actually going to say what I take great comfort from, and I've, I, I've said this many times before, but it, it's worth repeating for me, um, is that uh, uh, Kathy and I, our friendship is something that, if you take it on surface value, should not be. We disagree on many things. Um, but qu quite, you know, adamantly. Mostly your many. socks. The dress sense, I've I got to be honest, I've been on the road for a, a month, and this is the best I could do this evening. I, I mean no disrespect, but I, I get it, please. Um, but uh, our friendship is, is very real, and, um, and I think that it, it, I, I love the fact that we disagree, and yet we're friends. And I think that there is... If we have anything to offer the world, it is the idea that you can do that. Yeah. Um, that you can not think the same way as another person thinks and still both respect them and actually feel affection for them. It's okay. You don't, everyone doesn't have to agree. The world yeah. would be a much yeah. better place. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, we don't know. Someone's asked, when can we see the movie? We, honestly, making it was a joy. Getting it done was a, a dream. Finding the right place to take your movie and make sure it's taken care of is the hardest part. So we're in the process of that. All right, here you go. If you could play anyone on Doctor Who, who would it be? That's from Bridget. Bridget. Right here. She the Hello there. Hi. Hi. Do you, are you a fan of Doctor Who? Yes, I am. I would never have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who is a British I know. Uh, kids sci-fi. Huge, huge, huge. Very huge big cult following. Uh, and I'm, I'm very fond of the show. I, um, I don't need to uh, play anyone in Doctor Who. I, I quite happily just be an audience member. But if it was anything, maybe uh, I might have crack at the master, maybe, at some point. Yeah. You should. Than, you should. Right. You don't even know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. <laughs> If he's the master, you should be doing it, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. You're one of those people that would say, who plays Doctor Who? Well, he's not called Doctor Who, he's just the Doctor, am I right? Right. And now it's a woman. That's right, yeah, yeah. I, I get out on Ladies occasion. Ladies can be doctors too, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. You and Christian Bell had a wonderful um, something. Um, oh, joie de vivre. Any chance you two will team up again for a project over my dead body? <laughs> she's a lovely woman and she's a friend of mine. Uh, yes, life is 
full of surprises. Why not? Can you give us your take on Sean Connery's acting? <laughs> <laughs> It's a style of acting which is sadly no longer in vogue. <laughs> I particularly enjoy the sheen and I think it's Goldfinger when he wears a little toweling shirt of onesie. <laughs> which is what I'm wearing under my claws right now. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm a fan of Sean Connery. Sean Connery's acting, that's a proper movie star right there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, anybody you watch on late night now that they want to know that you particularly I'm in enjoy? Scotland, so yeah. You know, uh, I don't. I don't think I, mostly. There was no. T there was no television on the whole weekend. I can remember. I don't really. I don't really watch it. And yeah. and and little Liam is, is is like he's like Stewie on Family Guy. Yeah, a little bit. He yeah, is yeah. so much. Like yeah, he is a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he does an impression of him as well. Does yeah, he? Yeah, it's kind of uncanny. Yeah. If he uh, wanted to go into the business, of his dad's business, what would you say? I see, you can wait until you get done with college. Okay. Uh, and then you can get to it. You know, people always say when their kids act, oh, they like, they, they love it. That's why they act. They go, you know, my kid was eat, would eat candy all day as well. He'd love that, but I'm not going to let him do it. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's, it's good for some people, but not for my kids. <laughs> okay. Craig, have you ever gone back to check out the East Village since you left? Yeah, yeah, I have. When I lived in the East Village in, in 1984, and I think it was like a couple of years ago, I went back down to the Venero's Bakery, which makes these amazing cannolis. It's the yeah. corner of uh, uh, First Avenue and, no, is it Second and Eleventh? No, First and Eleventh. Uh, it's an amazing Italian bakery. And then I walked down to Tompkins Square Park, where in 1984 you could get, you know, heroin or killed very quickly. And <laughs> in Tompkins Square Park. And there were people there with dogs and children uh, in little uh, wheeled devices and, and hipsters with creative beards and people uh, milling around like it was some kind of weird Ren Frere of the future. It, it, it's changed a lot and for the better, I think, to be honest. It, it was a dangerous, frightening place when I lived there. And now I think it's overpriced real estate like everything else in Manhattan and that's fine. But you still love New York? Oh, yeah, yeah, who doesn't? Yes, of course. Okay. I think like, like most people, once you live in New York for any length of time, no matter how much you go away, you always kind of think, you have a vague notion, there's something happening in New York and I should probably get back there. Mm. You know, that kind of, there's a party I'm going on. Something. Yeah, I'm kind of missing something. If your life was going to be made into a movie, which <laughs> actress, actor would you want to play you? Would you want an actress to play you? I feel like this is a trap. <laughs> <laughs> and I decline to answer the question. Uh, I feel that was a trap. Okay, yeah. moving on then. Yeah. That was from Jessica, by the way. Jessica, uh, I would like Jessica to play me in. Okay. Well, that was really, that was the extent of their probing questions yeah. tonight. Well, who, let me ask you, who would you want to play you in a movie about you? Uh, um, Sandra Bullock. It's not bad. I would, I would have, for me, Peter Dinklage. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> that is an amazing pre See, you know what I think is amazing about him as an actor? Is you forget. Mm. You forget, and it's all about what he's doing. And he makes you forget. And I think when I see actors that do that, I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot he was acting. Ah, All right, I'm going to change it to Tilda Swinton. All right, I'm going to change mine <laughs> to Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Good choice. Um, I think so. I mean, the, really, if you want to just name great actors, we can go on all night. They, uh, what, what is your favorite um, chapter in the book? Which story get, brought you the most joy telling to everybody? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. There's. I mean, I assume most of you have not read the book yet. Um, but there is a, a story in the book that I will explain to you. In the course of my life, at one point, I, uh, I was around uh, some, uh, an, an old woman who died anonymously in a building across the street. And 
uh, it's documented in the story. I was about 18 years old at the time, and I was playing in a punk rock band. And we were all in one house, and we saw this old lady. We were actually watching uh, Diana's wedding to Prince Charles at the mm -hmm. time. And we saw this uh, old lady being taken out of her house. She had died uh, the night previously and been taken away. And we all talked about it. We were young and uh, artists, apparently. And uh, we were like, oh, we're going to write a song about the juxtaposition of this old lady and this great uh, royal wedding and this poor old woman and stuff. And, but none of us wrote a song or never uh, did anything about it. So when I was writing about that, I thought, oh. So at the end of the book, I wrote a completely fictional story about that woman's life. I took her from her birth, that I imagined, and took her all the way to her death that night in the street. And which surprised me when I, I wrote the story is at the end of the story, as she dies, she sees me in the street where I was. I really was there that night. But what happens in the story is that she sees me and in the at the time, I didn't see her, but I see her now. And that, uh, in, in the writing of a, of a piece of work, which was, I thought, a fictional, you know, kind of swish at the end of the, of the book, it became, I think, a marriage of, for me, imagination and memory. And... Uh, how they're almost indistinguishable and that the extraordinary power of, of the mind to create a perceived truth uh, for myself. I don't know. And now I think that story is true. I made it up. I know I made it up. But it but, makes you happy to think But now it's true because I fucking made it up and it's my book. <laughs> Anybody have second thoughts and want to ask something? Anybody have second thoughts about coming here tonight? And <laughs> anybody uh, wish they'd got to see Jill Biden instead of coming up here? I mean, let's live a little. You're with Craig Ferguson. Yes, ma'am, right there. Are you in touch at all with, uh, I think, Josh, who played Jeff Peterson? I am, yes. Josh is still my friend who played Jeff Peterson. And, and Josh is, uh, is busy with other uh, stuff on his own, but he's an extremely talented, Josh Robert Thompson you're talking about, is an extremely talented voice actor who was the, the guy behind the robot skeleton in Late Night. Oh, yes, uh, yes, yes. And, uh, which is an immensely, uh, annoyingly successful sidekick that, <laughs> that I had when I was doing that. But that was all about Josh and his talent. I mean, he's a, an amazing guy. All right, was there some important thing you learned as a result of your years on Late Night? What would be the single most important thing you learned? I don't know. It's very hard to say. Uh, again, uh, it was an hour a day, but it was 10 years of my life. So um, in that 10 years, did I learn anything? Absolutely. <laughs> what was the most important thing? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I, I really couldn't say. I, uh, I'm, I'm not a huge disciple of Freud. I appreciate his talent. But the idea of this kind of, uh, there is an identifiable moment that explains other moments. I don't know if I subscribe to that. I think it's about, when I used to swear or, or say rude things on late night, CBS would say, it's not that one thing, it's just the tonnage, it's the amount of things. And they used to, they used to say the word tonnage. And I think that's... They're weight shaming you. Yeah, they yeah. weight shamed They were weight shaming me. And, and I think that... Um, I think that, that's, what, uh, that's how information comes to me. It's through insistent, ton it's the tonnage of information that steers you, not one kind of like big aha moment. I mean, no disrespect to the Norwegian post-punk band. <laughs> I uh, just, you know, <laughs> that made me and I think two other people laugh. I, I liked it. What kind of music do you guys listen to when just, just at home? Because your, your musical taste has changed. Yeah, I think so. I, listen, I find myself listening to a lot of early choral music by Hildegard von Bingen at the moment. Do you know who that is? Love him. Her. Uh, <laughs> she's a fascinating individual, actually. Uh, uh, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing I'm sure one or two of you will know who I'm talking about. Am I pronouncing it properly, Hildegard von Bingen? Or, or is that how you say it? 
because I've only ever read it. Uh, read it. She, uh, she was an abbess in the 13th century and wrote choral music. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's incandescent. And uh, she, uh, she was an extremely interesting character. A real, uh, there's a real movie to be made there, I'm sure. I mean, if you, you know, you'd have to put an alien in or something. But, uh, <laughs> but a, fascinating, a fascinating woman, a, an amazing character. Very strong, I would imagine. All right, let's go through your family in these last few moments. And, and when I say their name, give me one, the first thing that comes to your mind. Your son, your older son, Milo. Artist. Your youngest son, Liam. Poet. Your beautiful wife, Megan. Authority. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually mean that. Uh, there, there is some, some, you know what I mean? It's, oh, like, yes. It's important. Yeah. No, you, that's right, you, you watched us. <laughs> <laughs> I love this man so much. This has been my great joy to uh, be able to get, did you feel like you got to know him a little bit better tonight? That's what I wanted to do. <clears throat> That's an odd thing to do to applaud a question, isn't it? When you think about it, really. It's like, if you did that individually, people would think you were insane. <laughs> like, would you like a cup of coffee? <laughs> well, what, is that, what does that mean? Do you want a cup of coffee? <laughs> it's a fucking yes or no. You're gonna love his book. It's called Riding the Elephant. It is a quintessential Craig Ferguson. Uh, it's about as perfect as you can get a book, I think. I loved it. I love you, my friend. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>